lovely viewers you are welcome to the national journal this is a channel solely dedicated 100 percent dedicated to the arts culture and tv if today is your first time please subscribe to join our vibrant community thank you you're welcome once again to the national journal so in today's edition of culture vibes i'm going to break down a video of an event that happened in 2022 you know in 2022 the new jabenhine professor emeritus Otibuatin and the jabenhima or mahima nanaya dani passed on it was a very you know sad moment as the new Jabenhine Omar Hene that several professor emeritus Oti Boatin is a prominent figure in the culture and history of Ghana. He has done a lot of things for the new Jabin people. I mean, if I remember way back in senior high school, my colleagues who were in Pub Jones Secondary School were able to enumerate a lot of things that the new Jabin, you know, uh, Omahine has done for them. Now, that being said, something happened that I want us as cultural enthusiasts and and and, and students to bring to our attention. Otunfuo Osei Tutu, the second, the king of the Ashanti kingdom. I'm actually saying this because I mean it has been a debate, but then like it or not, he is the king of the Ashanti kingdom. Just as there are several kings or chiefs in Ghana, we have the overlords here in Ghana. These are all titles that you know the people give to their chiefs and kings, even though they themselves might not necessarily refer to themselves with those titles. I can confidently say that time and again, the Asantehene has called himself as Asantehene. He has never mentioned anywhere that he's a king, but then the people of the Ashanti. You know call him king so let's leave it like that and then move on now in this particular video which was recorded by the royal palace multimedia one of the official multimedia firms for the mencia palace accounts or two for or say to two saying certain things now he began by saying and i'm explaining what he said in english for our people who don't understand the tree and who are not even gaganians to sort of understand he began by saying that he heard that his little brother and mother has passed on so when he got the news he was very sad but decided not to sit at kumasi but then come all the way from kumasi to the eastern region of ghana New Jabin to be precise to confirm and also mourn with them. Now, why does Otunfo refer to Jabin as the little brother? And why does he also refer to the queen mother as the mother and the sister? You see, he does that because traditionally, traditionally, a queen mother is a mother of a king. I mean, even taking from the literal words queen mother he is the mother of the nation and also mother of the king he sort of mothers the king act as a mother figure for the king console the king and also act as a mother figure for the people that they have a, a jurisdiction over but in the ashanti kingdom or in the ashanti traditional system this alone is not enough you see, traditionally, the Ashanti Confederacy was started by, by clans. The Bretu, the Asuna, the Aguna, the Asechiri, the Eduyana. These were clans. 
and these clans were started by individual families you know in the in the akan culture it is believed that all the tribes or all people in ashanti come from esumeja esumeja is a town in the ashanti region and that that place the the clan that rules or has overlord jurisdiction is the adriana clan okay so all the other tribes is believed to have originated from esumeja now cutting the long story short it simply means that the clans are related the clans are related they are related by a bloodline now moving fast forward even when we put the the bloodline or the relational aspect down when obri come for the renowned fetish priest that helped the ashanti confederacy to solidify that helped the ashanti people he did something remarkable what obri Konfor konfanochi did was that he made sure he united all the clans in fact it is that unity that brought about the word ashanti before the unification the various towns were known by their town names so there was mampon there was kwabre there was uh, Esumeja, there was aguna there was antwa all these were there but ubri konfo konfanochi came to solidify and bring about a confederacy and that unity gave birth to the name ashanti because of war let us unite and forge ahead and so they are united and that confederacy was sealed it was sealed with the head being the oyoko clan and so if the confederacy and the covenant was sealed with the oyoko clan being the head it means that every other tribe that formed part of the confederacy becomes a brother to each other so when Otunfo Osei says that i heard that my little brother because he Otunfo Osei is an oyoko okay and he is the one or the oyoko clan is a clan that was selected by divine reasons to be the overlord of all the clans and so as a senior clan he can call jabin as a little brother again jabin is also oyoko so jabin who are part of the oyoko clan and has been you know warlords for the uh, for the ashanti kingdom at some point in the history of the ashanti kingdom i think around um 1874 under the the reign of king kofi kakari broke away then the jabenhini was nana asafuji yes it was during the reign of nana asafuji that they broke away and the they wage war with their own siblings in the ashanti kingdom fast forward around november 3rd 1874 1875 was when the war could not last that they were defeated by the ashanti kingdom and so they found land and and and, and settled on and that part of the land that they settled on in the eastern region which belonged to the kokokorantumi people became the new jabin so what otum forces to said was right Kwabre and, and, and Jabin, they are all part of the Oyoko clan and so they are related. So Tunfo is related to the Jabin people. The Jabin people in Ashanti region and the Jabin people in the Eastern region. Now, why am I bringing this out? The essence of this long history is that time and again, Otunfo Osei Tutu always seizes the opportunity to remind the people who are part of the ashanti kingdom that they still belong to the kingdom and that he is the overlord that is the whole idea the first point that i want to bring to our attention otunfo or say tutu always uses every opportunity he gets to remind the people who form part of the Ashanti Kingdom, the Ashanti Confederacy, that the kingdom is still vibrant, is still alive, no matter the time and age and date 
and that he being the Asante Hene is still the overlord is still the overlord of the Ashanti kingdom in fact in the video after saying that he heard that his little brother is demise and then the mother is also demise that is referring to the chief of Gabeng and then the Gabeng Hema he went on to say that he could not stay in Kumasi he had to come all the way to Gabeng to see things for himself why because Jabin belongs to him. Now, do you understand what I said earlier? He said Jabin belongs to him. I'm <laughs> the reason why he said Jabin belongs to him is that Jabin was part of the Ashanti Confederacy. And the Ashanti Confederacy, the leadership role or the head of the Confederacy or the head of the Ashanti Kingdom was given to the Ashanti Hene, the Oyoko clan. And so again, he wants to remind people who are listening in Jabin, who are newbies, who were born ye ye yesterday, that the Ashanti kingdom is still alive and he is the overlord. Now, the reason why he, d he does this each and every time is for a reason. Historically, Jabin people have succeeded from the Ashanti kingdom be before and have fought the Ashanti kingdom before, but then could not succeed. That was during the reign of Nana Kofi Kakari, the then Ashantehene. And so Otunfuo Ose Yutu does this to remind the people that he is still the overlord and that they should not even dare try to think of rebelling. He also does this on with the good intention of reminding the people to stay united. So Otunfuo Ose Yutu made it clear that Jabin belongs to him even though they are in the eastern region because they went to war again they lost and they were brought back they were not brought back as slaves that is the beauty of the Ashanti kingdom they were brought back to take their rightful place one as Oyukwa clan who are rulers and leaders of the Ashanti kingdom and two as part of the Ashanti confederacy to still take their their role and their place as warlords in the Ashanti kingdom because Jabin has done a lot in fact it was Jabin the chief of Jabin that killed in team Jakari the Dinchrahini who was threatening the Ashantis when Dinchrahini was 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 requesting several you know things from from the people of Kwamai, Mampong, uh, Be, 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 Bekwai and Jabin the then Jabin was the one who killed in team Jakari when they they united and went to war the war that led to the death of Intim Kari for historical you know fact fact sake was led by Nana Boahe and Entu who was the Mampohene he was the, the commander in chief but the one who captured and killed Intim Jakari was Jabehene so I mean these people are are warlords they are they are they, they are warriors so two four brought them back so that they take their their rightful place now two four or say to two 
the king of the Ashanti kingdom also sees the opportunity in this video to say that he came again to New Gabin in Kufodria all the way from Kumase to also let the people in Kufodria New Gabin know that the fact that he is living and residing in Kumase does not mean that he has forgotten about his own people, his own family, his own clansmen in the eastern region. <laughs> Like, like I say, Otunfo or say to two, what is remarkable about him, what is noticeable about him is that wherever he goes and whatever opportunity he gets, he seizes the opportunity to remind people of who they are, where they come from, and the leadership structure of the Ashanti kingdom. So he says that, look, the fact that I'm living in Kumase, I'm residing in Kumase, and the eastern region is far away from, from the Ashanti region, which is the headquarters of the Ashanti kingdom, does not mean that I have forgotten about you, my own blood, my own kinsmen in the eastern region. Why? Because New Jabin is part of the Oyoko clan, and Jabin which is a branch of the old Jabi in the Ashanti region, has stood side by side with Asatehine in several wars. In fact, he goes on again to say that I even told my little brother and your own brother, Bekwahine, to come before me to make sure everything is okay before I come. Why? Because Bekwai is also Oyoko. And as I mentioned earlier, the war that led to the death of Intim Jakari, the, the famous Dentrahine that was troubling the Ashanti people had Bekwahine partaking. In fact, it is said that the beard of Intim Jakari was also taken and stored by Bekwahine. You, you know, when the Ashanti kingdom went to war with Dentra and defeated didn't try and killed in team jackery the body of in team jackery was dismembered and shared among the warlords that went to the war to be kept as a historical evidence for generations unborn to know that mampohini being the commander-in-chief of that war took part of in team jackery's body and kept it in mampong palace and is still there jabbing took his fingers that is the reason why the, there are fingers of Intim Jackery on the Jabin Hine's umbrella. Bekwai Hine, who was also part of the war, whose name is mentioned by Otunfo, or said to, to took the beard and Mampo Hine took his legs. But Otpemswo, the warlord, the chief and the kingdom ruler took the head. That is the reason why when Otunfo or said to, to was speaking at this funeral, he said that, hey, now that Jabenhine is dead, traditionally, I cannot come the first day. I must allow protocol to play. So I have sent before me Bekwahine, who is your little brother as a clansman from the Oyoko clan, your little brother as a comrade in arms, somebody you fought a deadly war with because in Team Jackery was a famous warrior. In that war, they could have been killed. But Bekwahine, Mampohine, and Jabenhine stood hand in hand with some other chiefs and they defeated in team jackery and so bekwai is your brother your brother in arms your comrade in arms so if jaben in the eastern region new jaben who is directly related to jaben in in kumase if he is dead and the queen mother too is dead it means that i must send bekwai who is your bosom friend in war to come and make sure that everything is prepared before me Otunfo, the overlord, the king of the Ashanti kingdom, I come and make sure that everything is okay. That is what I want us to learn from this video. That is the essence of 
national journal a channel solely dedicated to you know culture arts tv and tourism so that we learn from the things that we see so that generations unborn will come and get this history because it is said that we can only forget and have fear for the future if we forget our past it's, it is never good to forget your history because history will teach you not to repeat mistakes in the future now after otunfo said this you know there were dance displays by several chiefs so before otunfo said to him he sent the the, the Gabenhine of ashanti to lead the delegation with Bekwahini to come to new Jabin to make sure that the funeral preparation and everything is okay before he will arrive. So if you have enjoyed this video and would want other people to also learn and know about Africa's rich history, Ghana's rich history, please consider subscribing. Click on the notification bell so that you'll be notified anytime we post a new video. And like I always say, please stay alive by staying away from harmful drugs africa needs you your community needs you don't abuse yourself by abusing drugs and alcohol stay alive be alive your community needs you god be with you bye bye